This video is a part of a series breaking down the key topics and lessons from our interview with Han Zhao, CEO of Gina AI. Please check out Semi Technologies on YouTube to see the full-length podcast, as well as a tutorial showing you how to integrate Weaviate and Gina AI for fashion image similarity search. The next chapter is about understanding Han's start with neural search. Han Zhao is now the CEO of Gina AI, a huge company in the space of neural search, and they build so many amazing things. So I think it's really interesting to think about uh, backtracking to Han's story and trying to understand how he got started with neural search and what kind of projects uh, led to the thinking that gave rise to Gina. The first project that Han describes is his work at Zalando, an e-commerce fashion platform. He describes users of Zalando trying to look for things like a Superman logo on a t-shirt and how the team tried to scale this by adding these tags to the photos. So you'd have these symbolic tags like things like uh, Superman or say materials like cotton silk brands things like that to have these tags on the images in these e-commerce platforms and then maybe people would uh, search it and it would have the exact text matching of the search with the tags on the uh, images. And they also, uh, Han also describes how they had to have these typos in the tags because people search for typos. And that's what, another thing that neural search might be able to help with is even as you have the typo, it still say uh, maps it to the semantic neighbor of the correctly spelled tag. So they also had to work in typos in these tags. And, and another problem that Han describes is that they had to scale to 18 different language languages and um, so it's not just text to imagery you got to match the text with the product image but now it's also multilingual text to image and I generally I think this idea of multilingual text and this kind of unifying of the internet across countries and languages I think that's just such a fascinating thing about uh, technology altogether and internet technology but so Han describes say the cold star problem where uh, certain countries like Poland you didn't have a lot of training data so it was difficult to scale this to multilingual text to image search and then Han uh, first brings in this Frankenstein analogy of trying to hack together these search pipelines in the early days of this, uh, these LSTM CNN models, the challenges with stacking LSTM layers, and as Han describes what ended up being a Frankenstein kind of technology. And I love that uh, Frank Frankenstein thing. It really sells the idea of uh, this kind of monster system that's alive, but it's not really well put together. Uh, then Han describes work at Tencent and working on the social app WeChat, uh, closed social network, so uh, published content stays in the ecosystem. It can't be, say, Googled from the outside, and you want to make this content searchable so you can look through it. And Han describes a system built on top of Elasticsearch, seven layers of plugins for particular use cases. So again, this idea of adding these plugins for the specific use cases on top of this thing creates another Frankenstein-like system where Frankenstein, the analogy being it, it's alive, it works, but it's like this horrible monster of these uh, things that you've been gluing together to make the system work. So I thought it was really fascinating to learn Han start with neural search. And I hope you enjoy this clip where Han describes it. And this is just me uh, interpreting what Han has uh, told. Quickly, could you take me into what inspired your interest to work on, uh, say, vector search and deep learning for search and these kind of applications? Yes, yes, for sure. Uh, so actually, uh, my uh, let's say my experience with uh, neural search, uh, back in the days we call it a neural information retrieval, starting from 2017. Uh, so when I worked uh, at Zalando, a German uh, company, uh, which is a pretty big uh, online fashion re retailer, uh, it's like a mini Amazon, uh, but not so mini. It's uh, already one of the top 30 companies in Germany. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, but back in the days, it was not so big, right? So uh, I was working there uh, uh, and working on the, especially I worked for the recommendation team, working inside the recommendation team. And later I, I worked, I built up the search, uh, you know, the search system uh, uh, behind Talendo. Right? And then uh, when we work at, when we build this search system in Talendo, because it's a more fashion related, you know, you, you will see a lot of pictures, patterns on the dresses, uh, on, on the shirts and so on. Right? You see people looking for, you know, a very detailed patterns uh, on, on their on their dresses, right? So let's say T-shirt with uh, with some slo uh, with some slogan, uh, with certain logo, uh, with a Superman on it. Uh, but back in the days, you know, uh, we have a, we have a, for each article back uh, in the database, we we put some tags, you know, uh, manually put some tags to describe. Okay, so what is this task? What this article is about is the tag could be uh, like a visual based, 
or it could be like a, let's say this this uh, this shirt is made of co uh, cotton, uh, is made of a silk or whatever this kind of things, right? Uh, it can be also like a price tag, a brand tag. Sometimes the tags can only uh, can also contain typo. So I I, I remember very clearly that uh, when I brought the article, the catalog of the articles, I, I see there are intentionally a lot of typos inside the tag. I ask people why are they doing that, and the answer is because people search for those typos, and then they want to hit the typos to the to the article. They want to connect the typos to the article. So that that was in the days where you know deep learning was not so evolved in the search system, and people try to associate the article with the tag that is misspelled, right? And and then, but but the misspelling is one thing. Misspelling among all the neural search problems is probably one of the smallest things that uh, you know that we want to solve. The most important, the back in the days, the most interesting things is about how do you search the uh, the pattern, like the the Superman on the T-shirt, on the long sleeve T-shirt, uh, uh, short sleeve T-shirt. You know, connects these things to the article by using image as a proxy. Right. So that's that's kind of the key problem, and then it, so you can imagine it is uh it's kind of cross modality, cross model, right? So from text to image search, <laughs> but back in Talendo, it was uh, more beyond that. The more interesting question is Talendo, although it is a German company, it tries to provide service for eighteen countries in Europe. <laughs> I remember very clearly because we want to support eighteen different languages, right? Uh, in 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 across Europe, and then. Imagine that you build one text-to-image model, and then you have to <laughs> rebuild another model using query to, query to article this data set. And let's say we have a very small country that we we operate in a very small country. Let's say in Poland, right? So there are not so many <laughs> German fans in, in Poland, and then the people you know people don't use Talendo there. And uh, uh, so, how do we want to build such model uh, from from Poland? Uh, 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 their language uh, to the article because we don't have this training data, right? So one way, so we, we're facing very serious, uh, like this is this kind of code start problem because we lack of training data. If we want to, mm -hmm. if we ever want to build a training model from scratch. <laughs> so back in the days, my goal, right, my, so I later work in Talendo research and we try to solve this two problem in one shot, right? The two problem, one is from text to image. The second is from multilingual text uh, to image, right? So try to solve these two problems in one shot. And then at the end, we come up with a new research pipeline. Uh, let's say back in the days, we call it the deep learning uh, retrieval pipeline, uh, which basically is a very end-to-end -end solution and try to solve, try to combine these two problems in one big deep learning framework. Of course, it's very competition demanding back in the days because there was no bird model and everything has to be trained in RST, to be trained in RSTM, and, uh, uh, and people were not very smart enough or confident enough of using this kind of uh, you know attention things. Uh, back in the days, there was no such thing as attention and everything RSTM either RN or LSTM. And then, uh, especially you want to add multiple layers on, on top of RSTM. And then you want to build this RSTM CNN. It's like a, a Frankenstein. You, you put this RSTM and CNN together. It's, it was a very, it, it was a terrible model. But back in the days, you know, this kind of terrible model is mainstream, right? Uh, in, in the market. So that was the, the first start. And we I published an article about talking about this Frankenstein model. Uh, I think in 2018, uh, in January, basically summarizing my work back in Talendo. And that, that is the time where I left Talendo. After three and a half years, we worked with uh, this Frankenstein model. Uh, I left Talendo and working at a Chinese company uh, called Tencent. Uh, it's very big, one of the biggest Chinese internet companies uh, and mostly popular in East Asia. So back in Tencent, we have a uh, social app. Uh, called WeChat. It's a, you can imagine it's like WhatsApp, but it's a, like a, a, a mini operating system that inside your phone, right? <laughs> because it's it can you can do a lot of things. You can do payment. Uh, you can have a party. You can you can try. Uh, you can buy stock uh, <laughs> inside WeChat. You can do a lot of things. You can also play games, of course. Right? And uh, uh, so inside WeChat, we have a lot of. We have also our our own kind of like a Facebook timeline. So it's a mini social 
uh, social social network. It is a closed social network. It's not like everybody can view. So you can only view other people's timeline if you are the friends of the other people. And uh, it, because it is a closed source, it's not closed source, because it's a closed ecosystem, then the content that you, that you publish there, whether it is an image, videos, audios, the content you publish there uh, stays inside this ecosystem. So that means you cannot really Google it from outside, right? Because Google can, Google's uh, this uh, crawl, crawling bot, they cannot really touch this closed, uh, closed ecosystem. And then we have a very strong uh, need of searching those content, how to, how to get those content, or how to make this content searchable. And this content is including the text, the audios, like the audio snippet, where you, uh, you, you use it, you send it in the uh, WhatsApp, right? And also the videos, uh, uh, images, and so on, right? And also stickers, emojis. <laughs> so now the requirement back in Tencent was, how can we build an infrastructure? that can search all the kind of data types that we have, right? Uh, so Tencent actually has this system, which is built on top of Elasticsearch, right? So and they, they, they actually, they forked a very early version of Elasticsearch, uh, and they, they add a lot of plugins on top of that. Uh, I remember back in Tencent, we have seven layers of plugins. So the plugins has its own plugins. So we have a, in total seven layers of plugins. It is understandable because Tencent is a super big company. And over years, you get a, like a seven layers on, on top of the Elasticsearch. And then it, so basically every plugin focuses on very niche, particular search use cases. And then you know when I joined Tencent, I look at this. Another Frankenstein, you know, leaving from one <laughs> Frankenstein and joining another Frankenstein. I look at this architecture, and then I did what every engineer, you know, would like to do: is to first uh, uh, distract these things, right? So first uh, to destroy these things and build another new one, right? <laughs> so uh, and then I bring my knowledge, uh, lessons learned from uh, Talando, and then try to ma try to use a completely uh, deep learning mindset. And then you to restructure, to refactor the uh, the architecture. And then in 2019, we proposed a framework called Generic Neural Elastic Search (GNS), which is you can imagine is like a father of GINA today. <laughs> and the idea is really to uh, very radically using containerization, microservices idea, and wrap every step. In the uh, in the search pipeline to, to separate every step uh, every step in the search pipeline each one as a uh, own microservice and then connect and then use the container to wrap this microservice and finally connect the dot dot to orchestrate them together right so that's kind of the you know uh, a big shift from back in the days the elastic one is a big monolith program back in Tencent and now we are shifting to a very radical microservice uh, uh, architecture right. And uh, so that was a ma uh, g uh, generic neural elastic search. So you can still find this uh, GitHub repository online, but it's not uh, really maintained. It's sunset archived already. Uh, but then when I work at Tencent, I, I you know I, I in like uh, working for this project for about one year, and then this project gets canceled uh, for the reason that they want to focus on video search, right? Because back in the days there was a uh, some very intense competition between Tencent and TikTok. Uh, basically, the, the, the company behind, uh, 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 sorry, the, the TikTok is a product, and the company behind TikTok is called ByteDance, right, ByteDance. And there was a serious, very intensive competition between Tencent and ByteDance. And then, you know, as a result, so the company decided to spend a lot of human resources in the video intelligence, right? They try to analyze videos, do some smart video recommendation, all these kind of things. So instead of uh, doing what Gina's uh, original vision is about, the original vision of Gina of uh, Gina's is about building a universal search engine for every kind of data, right? So whether it is text, a video, sound, audio, 3D models, and so on, right? So that's, that's kind of like a, a disappoint me, uh, disappoint me a little bit, and therefore, like a, after think through all the all the decisions, you know, landscape, all this open source, my 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 interest in open source, all these kind of things, and I decide to leave Tencent and I start to start this company right in 2020 uh, January. So that's kind of the backstory uh, of Gina and why 
I'm working in the neurosearch uh, today. Mm-hmm.